Okay, we're back, and we're talking motion graphs today. In particular, um, we want to try to focus on the three types of graphs that we make uh, describing the motion of objects. One is the position as a function of time. Uh, a second is velocity as a function of time. And a third is acceleration. Those are the big three values that we need to be able to describe the motion of pre pretty much anything, whether it's a car, a plane, uh, a particle or atom flying around in a gas or something like that. In particular, we want to focus on the slopes of these graphs and make a connection between the three types of graphs and these three uh, quantities that we have to describe motion. And it turns out that uh, these are going to be related by the calculus, by derivatives in particular. One thing we want to make sure we always remember as we're learning calculus, this word derivative by itself is just a fancy word that means the slope of a tangent line. Key word there being slope. It's just slope. Um, even if we have curves, we can find a tangent line, find the slope, and that slope's going to tell us something about whatever it is we're graphing. So one of these motion graphs says an example of this. Uh, it's a, a pretty, pretty interesting and powerful way of analyzing motion. Nice visual way. All right, so some key ideas besides the fact that slopes are going to matter is more specifically uh, this idea that velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. This follows from what we're used to already. So probably in math classes, in algebra, in a first year physics class, something like that, you, you start plotting things, right? You, you start looking at maybe a car that's rolling past you on a tabletop and you make some measurements. And you measure uh, the position and how long it takes to get to that position. So when you have a graph like this, position, versus time, and it's a straight line, uh, that slope tells you something about the motion. If we recall our basic definition of, of speed, for example, speed is delta x over delta t, meters per second, miles per hour, something like that. On a graph like this, if you remember that slope is rise over run, x is your rise, and time is your run, so the slope of this line is your speed. Now in our calculus notation, we write that instead of deltas, we just replace that with d's. Okay, so that's not, not, not that big a deal for a straight line, certainly. But what if you have a curve for your position as a function of time? So now your slope is changing, and we can illustrate that very quickly by tangent lines. So at a point down here, your tangent line is doing something like that. But higher up on your graph, your tangent line is doing something like that. OK, so it's, it's getting steeper. The slope of this graph is telling you something about the speed. And so this is a graph showing that your speed is increasing, your slope is increasing. You're accelerating. Now, on a velocity graph, if you had something like this, that tells you that your speed is, is increasing at a constant rate. Well, the slope of this graph, your rise is velocity, your run is time, and that slope is the definition of your acceleration. It's the, the change in velocity over the change in time, rise over run. And again, we replace the deltas with d's in our calculus notation. But it's still slope. Okay, that's, that's what we're emphasizing here. OK, to illustrate this a little better, perhaps, and actually see these graphs more visually, I'm going to use one of the uh, active physics whoa, here it is, uh, simulations. And this is a car. That happens to be, um, well, we'll see that the car actually move up on top. 
and we'll see all three motion graphs being produced in real time right here on, on the graph part. So we have an initial position, we have an initial speed, it's starting at rest, and I'm giving it just a, a little bit of acceleration. Okay. So notice what's going on here. The green represents the position as a function of time. And when you accelerate, notice how you're, you know, if, if this is kind of, we're watching a car with a strobe light. So every second we see where the car is. And its position gets greater and greater and greater every second. So it's accelerating. Uh, as we were just showing, when you have an acceleration, you get a curve on a position graph. Your slope is changing because your velocity is changing. Now in this case, <coughs> Uh, we're accelerating at a constant rate, and this red line here represents the velocity graph as a function of time. So that means that you're s every instant, every second, you're going a little bit faster. Okay, and that's what we're showing back here. The slope of velocity, delta V over delta T, is acceleration. So the slope of this red line, if we were to actually look at these numbers here, should equal one. All right, I take that back. It, it's, uh, it looks like it's at three meters per second squared. So this red line would have a slope of three. The slope is your acceleration. The blue line is your acceleration graph. And notice it's flat, so that, that's just telling us what we have over here on the slider bar. Our acceleration is a constant, okay, constant acceleration about three meters per second squared. That's how these things are all related. What would happen if we uh, set no acceleration, but we gave it some constant or some uh, some velocity, some constant velocity? Check these out. Notice your position changes the same amount every second. You get a straight line. The slope of that line will tell you what the velocity is. I, I'll, I'll bet you, if you look at the numbers here on the graph, that the slope of that line is 4. Okay, because we have our velocity set at 4 meters per second. The red line is your velocity. It's fixed. Okay. Now, what's the slope of a flat line? The, the slope of a flat line is 0. The slope of velocity is acceleration. If your slope of your velocity graph is 0, that means your acceleration is 0, and it is. As soon as we give it some acceleration, okay, notice that your, your red line, your velocity line, is no longer flat. It has a slope value, and that slope value tells you what the value of this blue line is, your acceleration. And again, you're accelerating, so your green line, your position, is a curve. Your velocity is changing every moment of time. That's how these things are connected. That's how we can read these graphs, and these graphs tell you the story of the motion. And fundamentally, in terms of the math, it all falls back to these definitions. Velocity is the slope of your position. Acceleration is the slope of your velocity. And that's what derivatives do. So derivatives are cool because we can get more complicated motions where you have non-constant accelerations and we can still handle it using our rules. But for the time being, the, the, the key is just getting this concept in your brain. Okay, slopes matter, slopes on these graphs tell you something, and they're all related with the big three, position, velocity, accelerations. Okay, so I hope this helps. Play around with the, um, with the simulations. Okay, there, there's a whole bunch back here in the active physics. Um, whether it's projectiles, whether it's the motion graphs, uh, th these are very handy ways of showing you um, how this stuff is related and how to be thinking about the calculus as we go along. So I hope this helps, and we'll be doing a lot more of this in class, and uh, until next time, we'll see you.